Howdy folks, Sabra here, a.k.a. Sean, and welcome to Next War, World War III. Uh, so I've con conducted all the preliminary, basically, before turn one stuff. So some naval detection went on, some cruise missile strikes by China happened, um, removed some allied air, and then game turn one kind of started so some things that i forgot i'm gonna i'll end up forgetting all kinds of stuff right but uh something that i did not mention yesterday is the intervention levels of allied countries and or i mean or non-allied countries so the U.S. is at intervention level two, and Japan is at intervention level one. There is nobody on the non-allied side that has intervened yet. But basically, so what an intervention level two for the U.S. means is they will provide naval and air support, and that's the level two, But and then the level one intervention is supplies, intel, and special operations forces. So the U.S. is going to do all of those things. They'll provide naval support. They'll provide air support. They'll provide supplies if need be. They'll provide intel, and they'll provide special operations forces. Japan is an inter intervention level one, so they will only provide special operations forces, supplies, and intel. Now, supplies in the big game... Um, if I if I was reading the rules correctly, you, you don't receive supply points as reinforcements in the combined game, but you can transfer. So whatever you get at the game start, whatever the the amount that you get at scenario start based on which scenario you're playing, that's all you have. But you can transfer supply points between theaters however you see fit. Um I will give supplies to, according to reinforcement schedule, to Taiwan as long as I'm not involved in Korea or Vietnam. When those things happen, then that's when we'll do the, the giant supply pool thing. Uh, some other just admin stuff that I kind of didn't cover, which I don't know if it's necessary or not. Um, air superiority, we don't know what it is yet because we haven't fought the first um, air naval phase yet. So we don't have an a AWACS advantage as per scenario. ASW level is, it started at a 1, but I believe when Japan has any kind of intervention, it goes to a 2. The sub-threat level is 3. I chose clear. The Chinese player gets to choose what weather, what the weather is for the first two game turns. Um, a game turn in real time is about three and a half days, so you can figure every two turns is a week. So, honestly, it makes sense. Why would China try to do any kind of amphibious assault on Taiwan if it wasn't clear, right? You definitely want the the weather to be clear because then the oceans will be calm. You can actually land stuff and 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 uh, the weather does affect supply. So I am playing with supply rules. I am playing with the advanced game rules. I don't remember if I covered that yesterday. So um, so initiative does go to China for the first two turns as well. And then on to... So we're looking at our card here. So weather phase and initiative, that's already been done. Uh, electronic detection phase... The PRC got three attempts. There are three. You can do that to uh, detect headquarters. There are three headquarters on the map. I just gave one one attempt at each headquarters. So you have the uh, Eighth Corps headquarters here, which they were successful detecting. This is in southern Taiwan. This is central Taiwan. So this is the Tenth Corps. They were unsuccessful detecting that HQ, and then they were unsuccessful detecting the. Where are you? Ah, here it is right here. The 6th Core HQ. After electronic detection, you will do this first Special Operation Forces phase. China gets two of those. So this is the initiative player only. China's the initiative player. So basically, you got to use all of your, all of your uh, Special Forces tokens once. 
And then according to the game specific rules, you get to use them again. You only roll for survival after the second time that you use your your um, special forces marker. So I tried to recon, target, and or raid various things. Um, this airbase, I was lucky, so I targeted the airbase and the chopper. So I was able to get a reduction on that AH-64. I also attempted to do this this airbase. I was unsuccessful on doing anything there. I targeted and or I targeted, tried to add a target marker and raided this headquarters. I don't think the raid was unsuccessful, but I was able to put a target marker on there, which will make it easier and for the rest of the turn, if I want to do any kind of airstrikes, I attempted to target this airbase and was unsuccessful. And then I tried to recon the supply depot, which I was successful at least de reconning it, which means I can de I detected it, which means I will be able to target that with airstrikes. I also tried to target the airbase and raid the airbase, so both of those were unsuccessful. But... So that was a total, basically a total of 12 um, Special Forces missions because I have six markers. And I rolled for survival and all of them survived. So despite the raids being, the Special Forces being largely, I would say they were largely unsuccessful. I didn't get the results that I wanted, but all of them survived. So they will come into play later on. I'll still be able to use them later on in the game. So that is where we are at the moment. We have just conducted um, phase four, sub turn number four, whatever you want to call it. And now we are going to go on to the air superiority step. This is going to be the one that the, uh, this phase is probably the thing that takes the longest in the game, just figuring out what you want to do with all your planes. But if you look over here, China has a lot of air units compared to the Republic of China or Taiwan. So this is definitely, they're going to have air superiority for the first couple of turns until the allies get moving or get mobilized or whatever you want to call it. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be an ugly first couple of turns as the allies try to get that air superiority because that is important, but I will get back to you in a little bit. I don't think I'm going to conduct the uh, the air superiority stuff on camera. I'll just You'll get to see what the results are when I'm done. So, more in a bit. I have just completed the air superiority phase. Let me just double check and make sure I'm naming that right. That's the air... Alright, so basically I am here. Air superiority combat resolution. So we're going to determine the air superiority level. And... Alright, yeah, so I'll, I'll end up going to five. So after everything was said and done, there was a bunch of Chinese planes. I, I looked at it. I had to look at my different maps and find out... And this is where it's going to just take a long time. Find out, because I have planes scattered over each one of them. Um, I did pull a couple of aircraft from South Korea. They are able to... They are able to provide... Um, air superiority or help in the air superiority combat as long as they can reach the East China Sea, which they could because they are these they were F-16s, they have a medium range. So that allows them to go from here to here. So that is good enough for air superiority for Taiwan. Yeah, confusing. So it's just one of those things that, you know, if you're playing the multi-theater, even though it's the Pacific theater, if you're playing multi Multi games, you got to figure out who can, what can reach what. Um, so yeah, a couple of uh, F-16s that were based out of South Korea joined the fight. One of them did not make it. So here's here's the losses. So we had the 
the American losses, they kind of hurt, especially that F-15. That is an air superiority fighter that uh, got taken out, which, yeah, that, that stings just a little. But we were able to get one of the Chinese J-20s, which those are some of their best planes. So we got one of them. So two planes got taken out. There was a bunch of stuff that was aborted, aborted, aborted. So when it's all said and done, what's the big picture, right? It's all said and done. We have 11 Chinese aircraft left in the air superiority box and four for the Allies. So that that is just shy of three to one odds. So then we go to here. So in the advanced game, if the odds are 1.5, greater than 1.5, but less than 3.1, which that is the case, then the Chinese have advantage um let's see here i have to look and see what the how that affects the AWACS advantage but that gives you advantage there all right so the AWACS advantage does change so if any side achieves air supremacy supremacy so AWACS advantage is started at zero is there a there we go. Started at zero. So if you get air supremacy, then you increase it by two. If you um, achieve any other level, then you advance it by one. So the Chinese has the AWACS advantage, which is by one. Um, this also affects detection ranges. So detection ranges are now 15 hexes. And then what else does this mean? So now... These planes that are left in the air superiority box can now become escorts and or interceptors during the um, strike phase and the close air support. So these planes that are left in the ready box, these guys can perform strikes, they can perform uh, close air support and things of that nature. So these guys can be the air, the escorts to help ensure that these missions, not necessarily that they're successful, but they have a better chance of reaching their target. So chances are, I mean, the U.S. or the Allies only have four planes to either protect strike missions or to go after Chinese strike missions. So there's, there's not a lot in the... Not a lot of choices here. Um, and I don't... Yeah, there's not... The the Allies don't really have much in the way of being able to conduct strikes or conduct uh, close air support because there's nothing in the ready box for the Republic of China. As far as Japan goes, we only have an A-10 because this is a wild weasel. This is for electronic warfare. It's So this... This wild weasel you use to go after the detection tracks. So the U.S. is not going to be doing a whole lot. Of, they're not going to be doing, I don't think, any strikes or any close air support. You can do it with helicopters, though. And I say U.S., I mean allies. So there's this helicopter here and that helicopter here. So I think the Chinese accomplished something pretty significant, at least in game turn one, as far as... Um, Air superiority goes, even though they did not get supremacy with the amount of aircraft that they have here in the air superiority box, that's going to give them a significant advantage, especially with with the stuff that's available to conduct uh, strikes and close air support. Even though I do have, I'm using one, using one of the optional rules where close air support restrictions are in effect, so. That basically means that the Chinese can only use one aircraft to support any one, any one thing. So, yep, there, there you go. There you have it. That was uh, air superiority up to this point. So we still have a long way to go. We still have to finish the rest of um, the naval phase and then on and on. Right, so second special operation forces phase, that's for the non-initiative player, which is the ROC or the allies. There's really nothing that they can do. Um, there's no units 
There's no PRC units on the map. I can target, um, well, the air defense tracks for China. There's really not a lot of point of doing that because this game doesn't provide for any kind of invasion of China. So it's probably just a waste of my assets. Um, I can also go for um, theater weapons like nukes or whatever. I'm not going to do that yet, so we'll, we'll see what happens. In Next War Taiwan, there's no... You don't get any VPs for taking out um, theater weapon assets like nukes or chemical weapons or anything like that. So I'm not going to use any of my special forces at this point in time because there's no point. So now we go on to... Nukes, we're not going to use nukes, so then we do non-allied missile and cruise missile strikes and then resolve. So, in Taiwan, you get cruise missiles, China gets cruise missiles. It doesn't have anything in there for um, ballistic missiles. Vietnam, the chart has cruise missiles and ballistic missiles, so you can trade those kind of back and forth. So I'm not going to use any of the ballistic missiles off of the Vietnam sheet. One of the things that I'm running into now is a game information display for everything. So there's individual displays. So what I'm finding myself doing is checking each display to see if whatever thing that I'm looking for is on each one of those displays. So that's kind of the pain in the butt. Um, but, you know, it's, it's to be expected. Were they going to design a whole different display for this setup? Probably not, because how many people are actually going to do that? You know, there's probably, you know, only a couple idiots like myself out there that are going to, to try to undertake something like this. Part of the reason being is it takes up a lot of dang space. So if you notice... This is, this is a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. Like this, I mean, this is hanging over. All right, so we've got the, the entire Korea map hanging over. It's hanging over on that side. It's hanging over there. So even a 4 by 8 table is not large enough. And then, of course, I've got that table over there. You can see it off in the distance that's holding even more stuff. So, and then I've got this side table right here that I'm using to just put my books and stuff on. So <laughs> it takes up a lot of space. So why would they design something or make a player aid, you know, for, you know, the, the World War III thing? So I, I get that. So it's just, it's going to be a little bit more effort on my part, you know. And as I was walking around, I found things that I was like, well, you know what? So I had uh, one of the things that I changed is, where are they? Oh, the special forces. So I have six counters for the Taiwan game, and I also had six counters for the Vietnam game. Well, I removed the six counters off of the Vietnam game and put them, put them over there because those six special forces are going to be available for the entire theater. I don't know the composition of actual Chinese special forces, but I'm pretty sure that they don't. Whatever, and you know this... These, these are abstracted, right? It's not necessarily a single special forces team or whatever, but it's probably a group of assets that are abstracted into that marker. So, you know, I removed all the special forces markers off there. And then when Vietnam gets involved, then I will, it will be a shared pool of just these six rather than the six for this game and the six for that game. And those are the things I'm, I'm running into is like, okay, how do I, does this make sense? Does it pass the common sense test? And again, with the army units, it's pretty easy because you're only going to have one 82nd airborne division where you want to place it is one thing. So that that's easy. The naval units are difficult and the um, air units are difficult because they're not, they're not named units, right? Like the 82nd Airborne Division and its associated chits are named. So you can tell if you have the 82nd Airborne Division in Taiwan and the same markers in Vietnam. So again, I think I removed um, some ships 
you know, and, and, and put them over there because it just wouldn't make sense. So anyway, all of that just to get to where I am right now. So I'm going to do the cruise missiles. I have allotted six more cruise missiles, so two here. I mean, this, this air base has got a strike two on it. I want to see if I can destroy it because that will limit the number of air units that will be ready. And I'm going to try to hit these uh, detection tracks again. So I've got two targeted at the SAMs and two targeted at the detection because China wants to be able to fly close air support missions and do air assault missions and airborne missions and, and all those things. So I need to get need to get these tracks down. All right, so let's do this. We'll go ahead and do however you say that, Chiai Air Base. Let's see. So we've got two strikes. So that is considered a hardened target. I think. Let me go ahead and double check. All right. So I'm a little confused. You'd think I wouldn't be confused. I've played this several times. But. So. This hex here, I'm targeting that installation. It is an air base, which is considered an installation. It's not considered a hard, hardened target. These are because they're blue. I think it even says it in the GSR. Fourteen hardened targets. They represent targets in addition to those identified in the series rules that are underground, especially protected and reinforced, or just plain hard to hit. The rock has two hardened air bases. Which of these? Which of the blue ones on the eastern side of the island? The series rules twenty-four. Well, it's not going to be that. Not twenty-four point three because they've changed them a little bit. So what I think I'm doing, if we look at the advanced strike table, so you have hardened targets, which would be those two air bases. So we would go here for cruise missile, but these installations are not hardened targets, so I believe you use the terrain, which then we'd go over to here, which makes doing something to that installation way easier because I think I was always considered an installation like a hardened target and I don't think that is the case so what we will do we will use the terrain and not the hardened target. So it's a plus one because of their Chinese cruise missiles. I guess they're not as good. So we'll get a plus one. Oh, that's terrible. So there's two missiles. That is a one and a one. So that is an X. That. No, not that one. That is destroyed. That was definitely a successful attack. Watch the uh, air defense track will not nearly be, be nearly as successful. All right, so let's go to the. So now we're targeting the defense tracks. So basically, I need a three, or actually a two or lower because uh, where is it? Non-U.S. cruise missile strike. So it gets a plus one. So we'll do the SAM first. There's two dice, so I need need to roll low. I don't think a three. It would have been had they been American-made cruise missiles. So the SAM track is a is safe. And then the detection track is also safe. So let's go ahead and adjust our cruise missiles. Go down to 26. 
And then we destroyed that one. So air base is captured, destroyed this turn. That goes to one. Then we do the collateral damage, I believe. So that is an X result. So I think I'm only going to roll once because you can only destroy it once, right? So it's not a hardened air base. So there's no DRMs. Let's see what happens there. So that's a two for destroyed. So we're going to lose... Enemy player, enemy player chooses one step loss from an air unit in the basing box attached. No air movement points can be lost because Taiwan doesn't have any. So, um, what is it? Enemy player chooses one step loss. All right. So, that is here. Well. I think I will eliminate an air unit because eliminating air units is worth victory points. So we will go ahead and eliminate this guy. And then we'll put him up here. I've got my eliminated, I'm tracking my eliminated units. So that is another, that's two points, I believe. So there we go. So that will take care of. That'll take care of the cruise missiles. So that strikes. Now we can do air strikes, helicopter strikes, and escorts. So let me figure out what I want to do. I'll be back in a bit. I have allocated what I want to do for air strikes. So you can see Island of Taiwan. This is the east side. I, I want to conduct a strike on this hardened air base. So I've allocated so the the planes that are facing basically due west, those are the strike aircraft and then the diagonal aircraft for each one. These are the, the escorts in case the allies decide that they want to try and intercept. Of course, we have to detect them first. The allies have to detect each one of these missions first and then I have two of there. So I have this mission here against this air base. I have this mission here, which I'm going to attempt to... That headquarters was detected, and then remember the special forces put a... Uh, they targeted it, so basically they have... They've painted the target with some kind of laser designator or something. You can think of it that way. So that'll make that detection or that strike just a little bit easier. It'll give it a minus one DRM, which is a good thing. If it's, if it's not detected in, it makes it through. And then, if you look up here, so I have these, these, well, you can't even see them that good, but basically, let's do this. So those red cubes represent the air superiority um, automatic detection. So if you look right here, you can see because I have advantage, I can automatically detect units, not every unit, um, but like units that aren't in urban environments and units that are basically flat out in flat areas out in the open up to 15 hexes. Well, to the PR, so from this map edge, that's starting here is eight hexes. So if I count in seven more hexes because I have a range of 15, then I can go um, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So anything that is behind those red cubes or the clear cubes that are over here that you can barely see, I can actually, they are automatically detected. So I'm going to try to soften those guys up with a potential, with the potential to conduct my amphibious assault here. If I weaken these guys up a little bit, soften them up a little bit, this might look like my best my best location for um, an amphibious assault. That's kind of what I'm thinking, right? So let's look at so detection for the allies. 
So on my detection track, we have a detection value of 8 for the allies. So if we look here on the advanced detection track, here we go. We have an 8. So if I roll a 7 or less, then they are detected and or early detected. So detection means you can be, these guys can be attacked by Sam's. Early detection means I can scramble the fighters and attempt to get my fighters through to do some air to air combat and shoot everybody down. But I can also do Sam's as well. So with a value of eight, I think what I will do is I need a seven or less. All right. Well, let's, let's see what we got. Well, there's a three. And we'll go here. That's a one. Huh? It looks like a lot of stuff's getting detected here. That's a one. And that is a zero. So everything has been detected. Looks like the allies have some, uh, have a good detection network going on here. And if you remember, the People's Republic of China did send a lot of cruise missiles in here to try to take that out, specifically for that reason. So it looks like... Yeah, everybody is. Everybody has been early detected. I think I have markers for that someplace. I don't know. Ah, here we go. There's markers for everything in this game now. So it's. This game is going to get, because of the just the, the size of it, this game is going to get real messy. Uh, what do we got? So we have, I think these came with one of the supplements. So we have ADF, and then we have early ADF. So everybody was early detected. Now, the choice that I have to make is, do I want to scramble the fighters? and see if I can shoot anybody down, or am I just going to let the Sams do it? I think I'm probably going to let the Sams do it, because if you can recall here, I only have four units that can perform an intercept mission. Again, the Chinese have a, they have a distinct advantage right now in the air superiority fight. Do I want to, and I lost what? I lost two, I've lost three, three air units already. And I'm not really keen on losing more. That's the thing. I'm a little reluctant. So the longer the longer we can hold out here, the more reinforcements are going to start coming in. That, but that's the gamble, right? Do I do I just try and hold out, or do I put up a lot of resistance? I, I think I think I'm going to let. Ah, it's tough, man. It's super tough. Um, Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just do those over there because they didn't commit as many interceptors over there as they did here. So I'd be better off trying to intercept those. Or no, I don't want to do that. Do I save these? Actually, I don't think I can't do any close air support with. With those guys, I do have some choppers that I can perform some close air support with. This is it's going to be a tough one. Um, I think I'm just going to let I'm going to let the Sams do their work. Hopefully, hopefully the Sams will do their work. So my Sam track is a six. And then I have to look and see. I don't know. I'll have to look about the AAA as well. Okay, so now we're going to find out how successful these airstrikes are. So, I've, again, I've decided that I'm not going to try to intercept with just the, the four units that I have. I'm going to save those for, for later on. Um... So what we do is we can engage with, so these guys don't matter, right? So they're basically, they're just burning up fuel at this point in time. If you look at the unit, 
So you see that little asterisk there? You see the little asterisk at the end. So that's the strike rating. So it's a three with an asterisk. So the asterisk means it's standoff. If it's standoff, then you don't have to, you're not going to use AAA as well. So you're going to use SAMs and AAA. But because they're standoff, you don't use AAA. So we're only going to get attacked by SAMs. The SAM rating is six. So we will roll on the six column. Um, the red will be the first plane, or the, excuse me, the blue will be the first plane, and then the red will be the second plane. So we want to get a five or lower. I don't think there are, are any other DRMs, so. So a three and a three. And that means it is a plus two. So we're going to add plus two and plus two the result, which is not good. So basically what we would then do is we will do the strike table. So this is a hardened target. And then our strike rating is a five and a three respectively. So if we do the hardened target with a number five, we're gonna add two to that dice roll. And where does it show that? Yeah, so the SAM AAA result. And also, I wonder if we do the, I'm gonna have to check about the pilot skill. Um, striking headquarters, ground, nope, nope, nope. I th well, the, the pilot skill is a DRM, so then that will be a, so what we'll do, so that only ends up being a one and a two to the, to the die roll. So let's go ahead and do that. So blue again will represent the first air unit and then red. So that will be a seven. So we're looking on the five chart and then we add one to the die roll. So that is an eight. And that is a no result. And then obviously a nine is no result. So we're going to get no result here. So that was a lot of nothing to do nothing. So then we will do the same thing here. Again, it will be blue is the first plane, red is the second plane. These guys, again, are standoff. So a zero and a two. Man, these Chinese are not getting, getting lucky. So... A zero is X, X is air unit, helicopter loses one step and may continue mission. So we will lose a step and then what does the two do? Two is A, which I think is aborted. Aborts mission, owning player may attempt to press on, roll a die. So I can either, I have the uh, step loss as a possibility or plus two on the mission. I think I'll roll the die. So that's a three, so that'll be a step loss. So the air defenses are actually, they're doing their thing here. So now these guys up here, if you look, these are not standoff capable. So what's going to happen is they will also undergo AAA fire. All right, so if the mission is detected, so what I was just checking is to see when the AAA happens. The AAA happens before the attack. Um, if it's not detected, then it happens after the attack. So it looks like both of these planes, not these, because these are, those were just the, uh, the escorts. Both of these planes are going to be attacked by SAM and AAA. So again, we'll just go with the blue and the red. So we'll do SAM first. All right, so it looks like that one's probably going to get shot down. Let me see, a zero, that's X, loses one step and may continue mission, and then nothing happened to that guy. Now we do the triple A. Triple A for this area is a two. 
So it looks like, yep, AAA wasn't effective. So, oh, uh, let me see here. So you know what we didn't do? We've resolved this strike. We haven't resolved that strike, or we haven't resolved those over there. So it looks like we have strike ratings of two on that headquarters. Um, let's look. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a two. So we're doing urban terrain. This is, so it's a two. So we look at the urban column and it's a value of two. So basically we need to roll a one or less. That's probably not gonna happen. Oh, drop my die. And nothing happened. So both of those were ineffective and then we will do the same thing. This is, both of these are flat terrain. So the, the chances are a little bit better. It's not good to be in flat terrain. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think there are any. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do. Oh, pilot ratings don't matter. So that one has a plus one. Yeah, that's a terrible pilot. Well, let's see what we get. Those are. So that is obviously a miss, and a 7 is obviously a miss as well. So now this is part of what makes the game kind of take a long time when you play the advanced game is the fact that you're doing all this. This this really, all this air stuff, the, uh, the air superiority and then the air strikes and all that really, they add a lot of time to the game. However, I personally think it's worth it. It really adds a whole different depth of like where you can really micromanage your air resources, which I think is really cool. Um, in the normal game or the standard game, there's you just get some air points and you get so many per scenario and it's usually a low number. It's usually like, you know, three, four, five or six points, which they can go pretty quick, right? Like each one of these, like attacking this would have been an air point. Attacking that would have been an air point. I would have used up all my air points already. But when you have all your air units, it really allows you to uh, micromanage your air assets, which is one of the aspects of the game that I really like. So to kind of recap this strike phase, the Chinese basically got a lot of, they got a lot of bum results and then they got some damaged planes out of the deal so what happens now is we'll go ahead and we can clear all this stuff out of here I'll go ahead and pull these down here to the bottom and then all these air units that i just use they go to the flown box so they go here which basically means they can no longer be used for the rest of the turn So all that goes into the flown pile. We can move all these, move all these out of the way. And there you go. That is the, where was I? I think this was the strike. Yeah, first strike phase. So the first strike phase is, so non-allied resolve strikes, including ADF, done. Conduct naval bombardment. I don't think there is any because I don't have any Naval units um, close enough. None of the Chinese naval units are actually in these all sea hexes. Um, collateral damage. There was nothing damaged, so there's no collateral damage. Oh, you know what I didn't do is I didn't do the minus minus one targeting. But you know what? It's too late. I'm not going to go back and, and correct any of that stuff. Um, both sides alternate non-allied allocating and resolving headquarters and artillery strikes. There's no, there's no land units engaged, so that's not going to happen. And then each side may conduct an aerial mining mission. I'm not going to do that this time. So then we will move on to the first supply phase. So let me figure out what's going on with that. I have just wrapped up the initiative movement phase. I think I've gotten all of them. So the initiative player, which is China, gets to move in here all of his units. Um... Air mobile, sea movement, and transport are allowed since I don't have anything that's actually in Taiwan. It's all going to be one of those three things. So what I did 
Let's go ahead and move that. So we have right here, we have all three of these are amphibious landing craft. Each one of them has two stacking points worth of Marines on it. So all those are the same. So when you change, um, when you move from one region to another, so from an inshore box to an all sea hex, you have to reroll detection. So let's see what else I also did. So these are, so we've got a surface action group, surface action group, amp, amp, amp. So the surface action groups are, they moved in because we want to be able to do shore bombardment and provide, you know, naval artillery support. So that's why they moved in. Um, we do have these mines here. So what the mines do is they affect um, adjacent sea hexes. So actually, you know what? I could have put that one right here, I think. I think. So it'll be all adjacent. So this one would only affect that sea hex. So I think that probably would have been a better spot for that mine. So basically, you have to roll on the contested sea move table. Um... So anyway, I did the contested C move on this amp, ended up rolling badly, and it puts a strike one marker on there, which somewhere in one of these charts, the strike one marker affects the, the, uh, the Marines that are on board. They don't disembark until the combat phase because it's considered an amphibious assault. So the same thing happened here. I rolled even worse, got a strike two, I think that the units on board, I have to do two step losses. So it's only two Marine units on board. So both of them are going to take step losses. So this amphibious assault is not going, going as planned. I also tried to do some airborne movement here. Uh, the Chinese can do up to four stacking points of airborne movement per turn. I gave them escorts. Um, I gave them two escorts. The allies only responded with one interceptor, so the escorts had nothing. Or the uh, there's no way the interceptors could make it through because I was fighting against two two aircraft. But I was able to, I think, reduce and abort one of the aircraft. So you know, it is what it is. And then once the the uh, the interceptor escort or the air-to-air -air combat is over with, then you have to do ADF. And rolled terrible in the ADF, so basically this whole stack back to its starting point, which is back to the People's Republic of China. So this amphibious assault slash airborne operation to land on the shores of Taiwan is not working out well at all. Um, I also did, so I had several units that were here in the People's Republic of China. They moved from this box to this box. So I moved a surface action group, an amphibious with, uh, I want to say it's guards army, but it's not guards army. It's the, uh, let me find out what GA is. So it stands for Group Army, and I'll probably end up calling it Guards Army because I'm so used to dealing with the Russians. But anyway, so we've got the 14th Brigade, and we've got the 91st Brigade from the 73rd Group Army, and then I decided to transport uh, the Airborne Headquarters and the 134th Brigade in an amphibious vehicle. So that's moved into the... Straits of Taiwan, they will then move into the inshore box. So it's going to take a little bit to get them to Taiwan, but seeing that my amphibious slash airborne invasion is not going the way I planned, I figured I had to get some follow on forces up there too. So, yeah, let's uh, we'll go ahead and continue on and find out. So, the Marines are going to end up, I think. Um, probably assaulting, amphibious assaulting that hex and establishing a beachhead. Since there's nobody there to assault, it should be successful. I don't think there's any kind of crazy rolls or anything that I'm going to have to do um, to make sure that happens. 
So I have just computed everything, figured out all the the numbers and everything. I am doing an amphibious assault on that hex right there. I can only do it from this hex. So these two um, amphibious carriers disembarked their marines onto the beach right here. So I did take step losses. So one, one unit took a step loss here, two units took a step loss. So all three of those have taken a step loss, which sucks. But it is what it is, right? And then I figured everything out here. So if we're, their combat values are halved, so that is 1.5 each. You round up in, the, in this case, so that is 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, so it's 2 to 1 odds. An amphibious assault is one column shift to the left, so... Um, what else do we got? We got, oh, okay. Yeah, so we started, so it's flat, flat woods, so two to one odds. Um, amphibious assaulting is one column shift to the left. The, the difference in efficiency ratings is one, and we get a one for surprise, so that ends up here. Basically, we're three to one odds. I could not use naval support because as long as there is a opposing unit within 10 hexes, um, nobody contribute, can contribute naval support, which would have been nice because I had a SAG there, surface action group, and a surface action group there. That would have been nice to be able to lend that combat support, but it didn't happen. Um, I did throw in a couple H6 bombers. Uh, one of them was aborted um, because of SAM and uh, AAA. So that one's back on the track. This one ended up having some modifiers because of successful SAM and AAA fire, so it only gets to contribute a plus one. It is, um, so it's the second number here. So it only gets to contribute a plus one when, it, when all is said and done. So I got, so I am on the three to one column with a plus one DRM. Actually, you know what? It is a minus one DRM because you want minuses are good in the combat results. So let's let's roll this up. I don't think there are any I don't think there are any other DRMs. I'm not gonna look for any more, so let's see what we get. And that is a zero, so it looks like it will be two step losses and a retreat. This unit probably only has, yeah, so that unit is totally destroyed, which that's a good thing for the Chinese anyway. So we'll put that on the eliminated units track. These guys can, ooh, there's some coyotes outside. So they get to advance after combat, which is what they did. Um, let me see. Is there any for each enemy brigade or battalion eliminated? Plus one. That is a brigade. So that is plus one VP. All right. And that is, I think that's it. That's really all the Chinese can do right now because we just don't have enough stuff. So, the initiative to player, player declares and resolves all combat one at a time. So, yeah, that was it. There's nothing else. Oh, these can go to the flown track. <laughs> that stuff goes here. That can go away. And I think that's going to do it for now. I'll be back in a little bit. i got to go do a couple things. But that's I'll, I'll be back when we do the elite movement segment, which I believe these Marines can, can participate in that. And I think um, my airborne guys that are over here, I'll have to look and see if they can try that airdrop again. They are considered elite because of their uh, efficiency rating. So I might be able to make a second attempt at, at uh, 
landing those guys. I mean, it would make sense, right? Um, because each turn is considered three and a half days. So maybe day one, they tried to land. They were uh, turned around because of the uh, air defense fire. Or what I think it was the air defense fire that they were turned around for. So it was day one. So the next day, they tried again. So, uh, but we'll be back. I'll make sure I can do that.